Hi guys and welcome to the show and today or this week should I say marks the four month anniversary that I've had my Rolex Datejust two-tone. It's the most expensive watch I've ever bought, it's probably the best looking watch I've ever bought and after four months I've got five good points but more interestingly I've got five points that are really concerning me about this watch. So yeah, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to be selling this watch, I'm not going to be trying to move it on anytime soon, but the five things that concern me are probably quite serious concerns that I have, and ideally it's a fucking watch. You shouldn't have any concerns when wearing a watch, should you? So let's get into the five good points and I'll tell you them one by one. Now the first one is it is a Rolex. Now that is a good thing. Most people in the world see a Rolex and assume it's a real watch and assume it's a nice watch. And Rolex have got this aura about them and wearing a Rolex for a watch addict like me feels really really special so that's a good thing but it is a Rolex and for every Roger Federer picture that you see with him wearing a Rolex thinking oh wow the greatest tennis player ever wears a Rolex there's always some two-bit wannabe rapper or Love Island contestant also wearing the same watch Truth is, this watch feels great to wear, as all Rolexes that I've ever owned feel amazing to wear. The gold looks amazing, it's comfortable, it, it's just a really, really nice feeling that you get in your head, in your heart, even in your belly you get a little bit warm. So yeah, it's a great feeling wearing a Rolex. There is absolutely no denying that this watch looks great. Now, a lot of people will be put off by the two-tone and the gold, and I fully appreciate that, but you can't deny that it is a good looking watch, well designed, well proportioned, and they do it in so many different variants, like the classic 36mm, probably a little bit small for most guys now. The 41 is almost a sweet spot for me. I'd probably have it a little millimetre smaller if I'm honest, but the overall feel and vibe of this watch is amazing. It's an iconic watch. As I've just said, the 36mm is probably the more iconic on Jubilee bracelet, but it's a Datejust, it's a Rolex Datejust, it's one of their most iconic pieces in the two-tone version and for me it's just a fantastic look, I keep looking at my wrists because I'm wearing it, but it's just a fantastic looking watch and the last point is it's, you know, this is, could be a negative, could be a positive, but it's the kudos, if someone sees that I'm wearing a Rolex, or for me personally, when I see other people wearing Rolexes or expensive watches, my first thought is, ooh, I wonder where they got this watch from, I wonder how much they paid for it, I wonder what they do for a living. They must be doing quite well for themselves if they're wearing an expensive watch, and that's what I think. And I'm not desperate for other people to think I'm doing well for myself, but I'd rather them think well of me than think he looks like a piece of shit. What's he doing? <laughs> so uh, I'd rather people think positive of me than negative, and I think a lot of people do that. Now, the watch is like 2%, 1%, very little amount of perception that you will perceive off to people. But yeah, it's a nice feeling wearing a Rolex ultimately. Now, on to the five things that are stressing me out about this watch, and I've owned a date just previously, and the scratches on the stainless steel version, they drove me insane. I, I, I wouldn't say it kept me up at night, but it, it lessened the joy of wearing the watch for me, because you'd look down from close range, and it, it looked like absolute tatty shit, and I'd only owned it about a year. From a distance, from maybe a couple of feet or someone else looking at it, it just looks shiny in a Rolex, but for me, up close, the scratches really annoyed me. Now, I don't know if it's... I care less. I don't know if it's that Rolex, uh, sorry, Rolex, the gold hides the scratches more or whether I just don't care about them as much. But either way, it's scratched, it's beaten up, but it just held it better in the gold, I think, for me. And from a distance of this couple of foot that I'm looking at now, the gold just stands out rather than the scratches to me. So the scratches aren't as bad as they used to be. Now, a big concern. Now, it's the most expensive watch I've ever bought and it's the security, the security aspect of wearing the watch. You know, because two things stand out, it's gold and it's a Rolex, and that puts into the, someone will probably be prepared to chop your arm off to take your watch off, and that's not a nice feeling. I like both my arms. My right one's my best one, but I don't want to lose my left one either. So the real security element of someone seeing that you've got a watch and then the paranoia and try to break into your house because they know there's guaranteed £10,000 in there, walking down the streets late at night, going into a rough bar, whatever, wherever you're going to go, there is more of a concern when you're wearing a nice watch. In reality, probably no one really notices it. Even if someone did notice it, even the wrong type of character noticed your watch, it's very unlikely that they're going to go up to you and wrestle your arm off because it still takes some bollocks to be a horrible criminal like that. And not many people are that bad on this planet, I would say. 
But yeah, you, you know it's out there, you know it happens, and it is, security is a big problem. One that plays on my mind massively with this watch. Now, I've bought this watch with my own money, as I've mentioned in previous videos. We've moved house, we're in temporary accommodation now, but the money from the old house, we paid cash for this outright. And it's a nice feeling to buy a watch outright. I didn't get it on credit, I didn't get it on debt, I didn't get it on finance. Not that I'm against any of those things, but it's just, it, it was nice to buy it outright with our money. I didn't borrow off any family members. But when I wear the watch around my dad, I feel super, super conscious. He's been in the Navy, he's been a, a truck driver all his life, he works hard, he's, you know, he's a brilliant guy. And I just feel so cringy around it. So I always wear one of my lesser watches when I'm in his presence for some reason. The same when I go to my wife's uh, sisters and husband-in-law, I don't really want to wear it around them because I don't want to look flash. I don't want to feel like, give off the wrong image. I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, around my closest family, when I should be most comfortable to wear a watch that I bought with my own money, I do feel conscious and I think it gives off the wrong image. Same at work. Now you'd think, I'm in sales, so if I'm wearing a Rolex Datejust, People might think, oh, he's got a Rolex Datejust on. He must be good at his job because he bought it with his bonus or something. All these things play around with people's heads. But if they see someone turning up in a nice car or wearing a nice watch or a nice suit, oh, he must be doing something right at work. And I get that side of things. And it, that side of things does work to a certain degree. But there could all be the side of things where I go to see a customer and he thinks, what a flash wanker. Wearing a watch like that, his prices are too high already. That's why I'm not buying off him. And it can also have a negative effect. So I'm super conscious of wearing the watch in quite a lot of occasions going to work, going out, being around family. What's the fucking point in buying it to sit around the house? Not ideal, I know. Now, the fourth one is something that I twist and play with all the time. When I don't have a Rolex, I pine for a Rolex like there's no tomorrow. I'd probably sell one of the children to get a Rolex at some point. But then when you get a Rolex and you wear it and you, you, know, you enjoy it for a few months, you start to realise that they are fantastic watches but they don't change the world, they don't make you a better person, and it's just another watch. And Amigas, whatever other brand you want to compete with Rolex, they do a great job, and actually, Rolex are so far past Amiga or any other brand for that matter. So yeah, they're not all that. And after you've had one for a while, I always tend to look at other watch brands because they're just a watch after a while, but when I ain't got one, God, yeah, probably the naughtiest kid I'd sell. And ultimately, buying a two-ton Rolex, you could argue that it's attention-seeking and it's ultimately very flash. And there is an aspect of that, yeah, I wanted to buy a two-ton watch. I, If you watch back on all my videos, I've pined for a two-ton watch for years. This is the most iconic one, so I wanted to buy this watch or something similar to this. But when you wear it, you think it is a bit attention-seeking, it is a bit flash. And But, you know, people drive Ferraris, unless they're driving around... Sainsbury's car park four hours in a row just to let people see they're driving a Ferrari. It, it is flash. You buy nice things and they are flash, but you do enjoy them at the same time. But yeah, I sometimes think, oh, it's a little bit too flash. I sometimes think about trading it in for a standard date, just still a Rolex, still amazing looking, still, you know, got that great appeal, but maybe not as flash as a two-tone. Anyway, guys, there's just some of my concerns. I've, I've tried to be as open, as honest about the points that I like and I don't like. Ultimately, it's the most expensive watch I've ever bought. £7,000, I think, is the most I've ever spent on a watch before. This were over £10,000. And I think because it is such a milestone moment in my life that these concerns probably bubble to the top more often than not and I play my conscience and I think oh, if, I, if I sold it I could still get two or three amazing watches or I could sell it and do something to the house and put a conservatory on to the family on holiday, whatever. So it's, it's strange that these emotions go through me. I don't think I'm going to sell it. I do love it to bits and I really enjoy wearing it. But these concerns are real. So I'd like to know, am I being fucking crazy? Do you have these concerns when you wear an expensive watch out? Anyway, guys, let me know. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one.